Hello all, uh, this is Pomic and welcome to Cyber Security TV. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss about the OWASP ASVS, which is Application Security Verification Standard. Uh, so last week or the week before, they have released a new version called 4.0, and uh, they have done some massive changes uh, in this new ASVS version. And I feel like this is going to be really uh, useful for a lot of organizations who are looking to develop a secure software or uh, also this is going to be helpful for penetration tester. So in this video, we'll, we'll discuss all the changes that they have done. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so the first change that they have done uh, with, within the ASVS is they have now uh, included the NIST requirements from 863 into this ASVS. So mostly what they have done is all the authentication and session management uh, section of the ASVS includes the requirement from uh, NIST as well. And NIST, as we all know, it's an evidence-based uh, sort of audit. So uh, this is what they have incorpor incorporated here. So as we can see here, uh, authentication and verification requirement, uh, they have and done like you know a NIST mapping and also they have included uh, several uh, other requirements which were not part of the previous version of the ASVS so uh, one of the things so like you know NIST has the AA level so based on you know the application and the purpose of the application you you choose what NIST level is appropriate for your application you can do the same thing with the ASVS so if it's a level 2 for NIST, uh, it's the same applicable for here as well. So if you're not familiar with the ASVS framework itself, uh, I have done that video uh, previously. Uh, I'll put the link in the description here so you can go through it. But yeah, so uh, and also in the session management, they have also included a lot of requirements from uh, NIST into this session management as well. The next thing they have done is the inclusion of the CWE. This was long awaited feature and I, I like it and and the purely reason is CWE is for the uh, common weakness and variation so uh, anytime a vulnerability is published um, it's assigned a sort of like a, a, a ID number and now this ID is really helpful because for example if you are using any uh, vulnerability scanner of the shelf and you know it produces the report uh, based on the OAS top 10 or, or uh, pretty much any other compliance, it, it would have the uh, a CWE number. Now, since the ASVS also has a CWE, now you can map any compliance to uh, ASVS. So it's pretty cool, and, and I, I won't be surprised if in the future release of you know the scanners like Acunetics and App Spider and Sensic Hailstorm, all those uh, scanners will also give a compliance report based on the ASVS because now they have also CWE. So that's pretty cool. Uh, next thing, uh, you know, this was even covered part of the OAS uh, ASVS 3.0, but now I guess they have made it more holistic. So what they have done in uh, ASVS is uh, ASVS is comprises of three level, level one, two, and three, and they have made sure level one is applicable to all the applications. So, uh, you know, that's a minimum base standard for any application to be secure. So you have to have your application compliant with the ASVS L1. And also, it's sort of a superset of OWASP Proactive Controls 2018. So that's one of the projects from OWASP where it will define what are the controls you need and uh, you know you need to implement in your application so it defines the top 10 controls and also the OWASP top 10 which is the most popular framework as well uh, till date which define the top 10 vulnerabilities so it's a, so what they have done is in the OWASP ASVS L1 they have made sure they include the control requirements from both of the standards and they have organized it so you know made it more like a checklist uh, version of the top 10 in the Proactive Controls 2018. Now, uh, within the standard as well, like within the ASVS uh, documentation, you would see the mapping between the Proactive Controls and the requirements. So uh, if somebody uh, is willing to, uh, you know, see whether they have included the controls and where does it stand in the ASVS, they can also check it. So, 
so uh, if we see here in the OASP ASVS 4.0 documentation here you can see uh, they have uh, given the numbering here like you know C1 C10 so which are which is mapped back to the proactive controls uh, of the another project so that's that's pretty cool and here you can also see the CWE column uh, which uh, I was talking about like you know they have mapped each requirement with the CWE of course there may be some cases where the mapping was not done uh, due to so and so reason but uh, still they have uh, you know put a great effort on mapping most of the requirements and likewise they have also made sure the level one is the superset of the PCI DSS 3.2.1 section subsection 6.5 requirements so uh, if you look at the you know if your application happens to do any e-commerce transactions and deal with the you know cardholder data then uh, again if your application is compliant with the level one that ensures that you have covered all the bases for the PCI as well um, Another thing, uh, of course, which was a long awaited, like, you know, improve the control. So if you look at the top 10, uh, it gives you the list of top 10 vulnerabilities, but then doesn't give you what control does the application need uh, based on the current environment. So uh, the modern application is more like, you know, a cloud based application with the continuous integration and then uh, DevSecOps and API based and all those things. So uh, ASVS 4.0 they have improved a lot in terms of they have uh, taken consideration of all this modern application uh, so uh, you could family like you know if you are developing any application with the modern technologies you can still go with the ASVS 4.0 and feel confident rather than just uh, you know going with the top 10 and uh, and so uh, if, you, if you see again, you know, the example on the ASVS documentation. Uh, so for example, like, you know, 13 section is about the API and web services. If you see the previous version, there was only one section which talks about the, a uh, little bit about the SOAP and REST APIs. But now they have uh, three sections. One which talk about the generic web security requirements, then the RESTful, uh, where you have a lot of JSON data and then uh, also talks about this SOAP and then GraphSQL. So uh, they have taken consideration like, you know, whether your application is in cloud, then you need the cloud controls. And if you go through this standard, it talks about pretty much everything. Uh, next thing is uh, uh, there are two things they have taken off in this standard. Uh, not two things actually one uh, and then one partial so mobile application security was part of the uh, previous version uh, but then they have uh, took off from the new version and their reasoning was uh, I agree with them uh, because we already have another project from ASVS which is MASVS uh, focused on the mobile applications so uh, they do not want to integrate a mobile application with the web application so they have kept it uh, separate and eliminate the complete mobile security requirements from this uh, ASVS and then uh, uh, there was a buzz about like you know including the IOT requirements internet of things because nowadays a lot of devices are uh, using uh, IOT functionalities so uh, they have also uh, planned to include this IOT requirements into the current version but for some reason uh, it couldn't be but again, it will be part of the next version of the ASVS. Uh, that's what they are uh, claiming. But even with the current version, uh, if you see the appendix C, you will see, you will still find some uh, help with the IoT. So if, if your application does some sort of IoT development or IoT testing, you can still uh, follow ASVS for the guidance, but it's not official yet. And uh, last but not the least, uh, they have uh, eliminated some of the duplicated controls and also you know some less impact impactful controls so for example uh, ASVS is comprised of what uh, probably more than 180 controls and having all the controls uh, like you know even if those are less impactful doesn't make sense because you would be wasting your time and resources on implementing controls which are not required 
so rather than what they have done is you know they are focused on the controls which are really necessary and uh, that's why and, and like you know make the standard as optimized as possible and that's what they have done here so those are uh, pretty much all the changes which they have done in the current version of ASVS uh, but uh, from from my perspective uh, these are some massive changes and, and I, I really liked it so like you know, if you go through all the controls and, and read through the controls you could really see like you know these are the required controls for all of the modern applications so uh, I like it so that's pretty much it I want to discuss in this video uh, hope you like it uh, hit a thumbs up if you did and then please subscribe to my channel uh, we talk about a lot of application security uh, related uh, 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 like you know not just the application security also the network security but mostly penetration testing and those sort of things so thank you for watching